Welcome to the NTN Nightly, I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. St. Lucia's Prime Minister makes a case for the redesigning of economic models to the benefit of small island states. The Gordon and Walcott Methodist Primary School becomes the first school in St. Lucia to appoint school safety officers. The Lightning Aquatic Swim Club gives back. All that plus the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney is among world leaders who are in New York for the 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly. Several forums are being held on the sidelines of the General Assembly. Honorable Chastney on Monday participated in one of those, a panel discussion on the topic, transforming markets, redesigning today's economic models at the World Economic Forum's Sustainable Development Impact Summit. The discussion focused on the measurements of productivity and economic growth, as well as human prosperity, natural capital health, and community resilience. More from Janelle Norville. Quote, how can we build a market that people want and will take into account matters of sustainability, inequality, and climate change, unquote, was the focal point of the discussions at the World Economic Forum. Prime Minister of St. Lucia and Caribbean Community, CARICOM Chairman, the Honorable Alan Chastney, indicated that while he believes the world is not ready for the required changes so as to take into account environmental issues, including greenhouse gas emissions and the issue of climate change, he noted that the emergence of a more conscious set of consumers is pushing the business world in this direction. In the meanwhile, you have a new consumer that's coming out that is now demanding that change and is now purchasing totally differently. So you hear people saying, I'm not going to eat meat because meat or cows are our second largest emitters um, uh, of, of carbon emissions. So if the consumer now starts reacting to those things, is the system set up to be able to deal with that? And see, this is where I think a small island developing state comes in. So imagine if a, if a country of 180,000 people can find the, the solutions to be sustainable and viable, and that you now go the way that we're thinking. We're saying, let us, uh, I had to write it down again, think small and act smart, hmm. right? Because it's about being small now. All of a sudden, we're the big part was the economies of scale, but it, the, it wasn't being priced in because you have the transportation to bring everything else to on the distribute on a world basis. Whereas I go to a restaurant in an island, Bali, I want to get fresh produce from Bali. And now people are saying that's what they want. They don't want the canned juice that comes from somewhere else. The Prime Minister indicated that the consumer now has the power to change the market. He explained their wants and needs are able to influence the choices made by businesses. I'm seeing a lot of people now when they're traveling around the world, what's the number one word? Authenticity. And that authenticity and that requirement to be different is what I think is going to be that fundamental change. And she was like, Malata is right in that the power is in the consumer. The consumer now is starting to realize that they actually, in fact, have a lot of power. And we have seen some game changers. So the internet has made information more readily available. Um, the internet allows me to go and book my vacation and research my vacation, whereas what did we do before? The lazy way. Went to a travel agent or a tour operator. They had a nice brochure, cut down a lot of trees to be able to produce the brochure. And they, we were being told where to go versus the ability to research and find things that share the same values as us. Um, so this is the game changer that we're depending upon um, to make the change. And I think that if the world can genuinely focus on one thing, because we've asked the UN. The UN was established in order to prevent um, a third world war from taking place. And I think the greatest threat to a world war right now is the inequity. I genuinely believe as a politician that there should be a minimum standard of living that every single human being in this world deserves. The Prime Minister is expected to deliver his statement to the general debate of the United Nations General Assembly on Friday, September 27, 2019. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. Meantime, relations between India and CARICOM are expected to heighten when the respective representatives engage in several bilateral meetings during the week of the UN General Assembly. We hear more on the CARICOM position in this report by CARICOM News Time. 
CARICOM Secretary General Ambassador Erwin LaRocque anticipates that diplomatic political cooperation between the community and India will deepen when the two sides meet in New York for the first CARICOM India Summit. Heads of government of CARICOM will have discussions with the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, on Wednesday, the 25th of September, on the sidelines of the 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly. The new ambassador of India to CARICOM, Dr. K.J. Srinivasa, is optimistic that this high-level engagement will pave the way for enhanced bilateral relations, particularly in the area of trade. He said during the period April 2018 to March 2019, India's trade with CARICOM was pegged at 674.32 million US dollars. Dr. Srinivasa said immense opportunities exist for CARICOM and India to further enhance bilateral trade in areas such as agriculture and food security, health and pharmaceuticals, small and medium enterprises, marine development and oceanography, and disaster management. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development has achieved a major milestone in its school safety program. Students at the Gordon and Walcott Primary School began training in basic safety procedures over two years ago, which included hazard analysis, first aid, and fire safety. The training forms part of the Model Safe Schools program, an initiative designed to incorporate comprehensive disaster risk management considerations into school sector policies. That training has blossomed, and students are now school safety officers, a first for the school and St. Lucia. They completed a very intense summer camp with Miss Eriste and her team in completing and concreting all of the, the training that they had done over the last two years. We thought it's such a keen initiative to start this group here at our school and be the trailblazers and the trendsetters for what school safety should become, that we are empowering our students, that they can become the agents of safety and the agents of change in our schools. But for us, succession was important. Our officers are in grade six. That means they will be leaving our schools soon. So what the teachers have done is identified a group of students from grade five who we are going to install today as school safety trainee officers and they will be trained throughout the course of this school year to take over from our patrol officers in the third term. Health and Safety Officer with the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, Bernays Kodra, says the aim is to empower students to practice safety in and out of schools. It is not just for the school, but you will practice safety whilst you are walking on the streets, whilst you are at home, whilst you are in your community, and so safety will become something at the forefront of everybody's mind. And we are hoping that as we continue this process, that our country will, be, will become a safer place for everybody. Martha Foster is the district education officer for the school. I want to congratulate the Gordon and Walcott Memorial Methodist School on taking this initiative, receiving the training, and implementing the training, which is important. The program is being funded by the Caribbean Development Bank and implemented by the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, SIDEMA. And this is DNTN Nightly. Stay with us. I am a child. I am HIV positive. I am a Muslim. I'm a journalist. I am gay. I am a political activist. I am differently abled. I am Chinese. And me, I'm a little plus size. The first step toward change is awareness. The second step is acceptance of individuality and differences within all of us. A message brought to you by the Department of Health and Wellness.
Welcome back. The Lightning Aquatic Swim Club is giving back to the society by reaching out to young persons through the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment. Here's Chevron Marius. The Lightning Aquatic Swim Club has continued to demonstrate their support to the government and people of St. Lucia by donating school supplies to the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment. The ceremony was held at the Ministry's conference room on Friday, September 20th, 2019. Public Relations Officer Ms. Kareti Cooks-Charles expressed her enthusiasm in assisting the poor and vulnerable in St. Lucia. This is our third year of, um, doing this. It's called Lightning Aquatics Walk in My Shoes Initiative. And we are extremely happy that this year it, it's, a, it's much bigger. We have a, quite a variety of things. When we first started, we focused mostly on donating shoes because when we reached out to Ms. Tuse, she shared with us a long list of persons in need. And when I saw that list, I remember being overwhelmed because I said to her, we can't possibly help everybody, but we're going to try. And um, as the years progressed, we kept um, giving more. She also mentioned that there was a need for school uniforms in good condition, stationary books, etc. So that's what we tried to do this time around. The supplies range from school pants, shoes, notebooks, storybooks, school socks, school uniforms, and stationery. Deputy Director in the Welfare Unit, Ms. Tanzia Tuse, extended special thanks to the donors for the much-needed books and supplies. Thanks for all of your support. Thanks for caring and thanks for making the effort every year to know that walking my shoes is continuous. It started three years ago and it's continuing. Don't think that your gifts or your presents are just for her. It's not just for the Castries Basin. It goes far and wide. Oh, the island-wide, all of our officers from the, reg the various regions on the island are here. And then we try to distribute as evenly as we can with whatever it is that we have. The Lightning Aquatic Swim Club is the winner of the coveted Club of the Year Award for 2017. Reporting from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, I am Chevrolet Marius. Regional and international organizations continue to support the recovery efforts in the Bahamas following the passage of Hurricane Dorian. Tosankin English Francis of CARICOM News Time has the latest. The Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, SEDEMA, has expressed profound gratitude to the donors who have contributed to the humanitarian relief effort in the Bahamas. Sedema said operations of international and regional partners have been streamlined with existing emergency support groups of the Bahamas National Emergency Operations Center. Sedema has assisted the center in the re-establishment of an emergency operations center in Abaku and with the drafting of a conceptual framework for recovery planning for the Bahamas. The framework was presented to the Prime Minister of the Bahamas and his cabinet. Sedema is also assisting the Bahamas with a detailed assessment of damaged sectors, including agriculture, health, education, tourism, housing, as well as with debris and waste management. Other CARICOM institutions, including CARDI and the CARICOM Impacts, are involved in the aid response. You can read Sedema's updated reports on the situation in the Bahamas at sedema.org. The report has details of all the regional and international agencies involved in the disaster emergency response and management in the Bahamas. Guyana welcomed the first set of hurricane victims from the Bahamas Sunday last. Several ministers of government were present at the Chetty Jagan International Airport to welcome home a family of five who were displaced after Hurricane Dorian ripped through parts of the Bahamas. And stay with the NTN nightly. Up next, Prime Minister Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Lemon 
Infinity BS tene et ben tout c'est moun ki en bonne santé au Liwon ka respirer ces vermin là moun ki pani bon tempérament kon sa ki ni maladie HIV alcohol ka fumé ti mamay e grand moun bien sensible pour ces maladies ça moun ki ka tout c'est ni pou prendre précaution lè yo en parmi moun en place publique couvert bouchou lè ka estene tout c'est visiter docteur et ben place santé fini tout traitement yo ba ou pour sa joindre guérison et puis maladie TB en responsabilité ou aider tout bout si mais maladie TB et HIV protéger corps et les autres Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NDN Nouvelle en Creole. Monsieur Tan Nisha, Monsieur Madame département qui est responsable de pour formation au gouvernement celle-ci ça c'est GIS Ensemble de télévision nationale pays à NTN, Capacito Nouvelle Creole, Président Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement cette ci j'ai placé protection les citoyens pays à haut à solis et potassio. Ça c'est parce que gouvernement j'ai préparé un plan en façon développement pour abattre la situation crime sérieusement par 40% pour bon l'année 2022. Il y a une façon que le gouvernement a plan pour adresser cette situation. C'est pour mettre plus attention à son opération police et que résultat pour employer plus de police. Ça, c'est officier police, c'est ici. Pour le passé, le 20 septembre, le Premier ministre de l'Ontario, Alain Chasney, a adressé un set spécial officier police réserve qui était participé dans la cérémonie pour marcher le finissement et le Le Premier ministre Chasney a déclaré que l'organisation police, c'est ici. J'ai embrassé ces changements là en façon qui est très positif. Selon le Premier ministre Chasny, la panne pièce système de sécurité, pièce façon pour les officiers pour tenir la communication et puis une autre, de faciliter à tes pauvres tout bonnement. Le Premier ministre l'a ajouté que ces équipements n'ont pas été suffisants et que système l'audience était capable de comme si était plus contre pays à passer en faveur. Le Premier ministre Chasny a noté que la situation ça là, il y a ni deux choix. Soit vous mettez la main à la tête, et bien, pré action pour corriger la situation. Le Premier ministre a dit que le gouvernement a placé un pile effort pour augmenter les ressources pour les pays. Et pour aujourd'hui, jour, parce que aujourd'hui, jour, c'est pour les réserves là, c'est un grand marché devant un effort pour adresser la brise organisation pour les ici. C'est un spécial officier pour les réserves là, qui a trouvé un placé dans ces communes côté crime très actif. En commune Concastri, Mikou, Vieux-Fort, ex Les commandantes pour l'Académie des Atides de Police, ben des Atides de Police, le Centre Desi, Dola, bienvenue, et dit que c'est un jour qui est très important comme la UPA qui a une plus de police à présent. Les membres organisations de police cette ci qui étaient puis système de sécurité régional, ça c'est RSS, de temps Cyclone Maria, de décombrer les Dominique pour assister durant trois cas de ça là j'ai trouvé honoré pour service yo officier qui trouvé honoré et puis arrestation durant opération en mois septembre le 12 pour le 27 décembre 2017 premier ministre aussi honorable Alain Chasté te présent pour te présenter médaille de l'honneur pour ce officier ça là ministre des affaires sécurité nationale honorable Hamangel de Francis qui aussi c'est chairman arrestation là dit il te plaît pour contribution à ces officiers. Il a aussi déclaré que ces Dominicains apprécient le service de ces officiers en pile et que ça a trouvé une façon de l'honneur. C'est une anti-façon d'appréciation pour le service de ces Chef de police, Severin Mocheri, aussi remercie Arrest Asla pour ses pour pour ces officiers et ces Il dit que ces officiers n'ont pas dit pas en été là pour la sécurité seulement, mais ils ont aussi aidé pour bâtir ces communes à Dominique. Manoir de services médical hors de l'Amérique, Jean Péa, pour procurer services finesse pour les résidents. Batoa entre le dimanche le 23 septembre et Kayan Péa pour juste le 2 octobre. Et Kay procurer services sans paiement à l'hôpital Owen King, commencé mercredi le 25 pour le 30 et en centre national culturel à Mont Bernard. Officier qui est responsable pour affaires médicales, Dr. Sharon Belma George, vous remarquez que Gosse Manoir de poser yon problème pour être accosté en pré serafin parce que de l'eau la mer la wad la trop bas alors bateau ka rester des rois en la mer 
ekyo lot batu ki pribiti ka transporter moun ale a boy sorti la place carénage docteur belmo george ka conseil tout moun ki ni pou fè l'opération ka ni brise yon lot moun pou lè pi yo moun sa la ka ni pou reste et pi di wan tan i ka reste i ka trouve traitement a bo moun wa medical la se pou sa la c'était supposé visiter l'hôpital Owen King hier mardi ça c'était ah ben j'étais pour visiter excusez-moi jodi là pour moun ki te pou kote fè l'opération ça là ah ben moun ki pou kote fè apportement ça visiter ces places cliniques là pour faire arrangement pour l'opération ça fait pour ça faire c'est l'opération ça là arrangement ça fait et puis président conseil national des transportations publiques pour procurer service pour l'hôpital Owen King sorti hot facilité pour l'auto passager Bexon et Cicéron except que tuel national là sorti par facilité l'auto passager la Clary qui va se servir sur ça là il y a avait ti moun pour pas porter cigarette marijuana et pièce qualité fermement et ben revolver à sous qui va ton aller pour recevoir ce traitement ça là et c'est comme ça nous entre en bout nouvelle là mon ca monsieur autant pour ca regarder Mon cavalier a invité à se pour jeter plus moins considérer qu'on se veut la vie. Donc il pose toute l'autre nouvelle à quoi il. Après ça, mon cavalier pose tout. Michel. Merci on Pale Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Cloudy and breezy with scattered moderate to heavy showers and isolated thunderstorms over the northern Leeward Islands. Elsewhere, fair skies becoming cloudy at times with a few showers. Moisture and instability trailing tropical storm Karen will continue to cause cloudiness, showers and possibly thunderstorms mainly over the northern Lesser Antilles today. A tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour. Tropical storm Lorenzo is expected to become a hurricane by Wednesday and a major hurricane by Thursday. This system is expected to remain over the open Atlantic Ocean during the next 5 days. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 12:59 p.m. and was low at 5:22 p.m. The tide for Vieux Fort Bay was high at 2:06 p.m. and low at 6:49 p.m. The seas slight to moderate with waves and swells 3 to 6 feet or 0.9 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Wednesday at 5:53 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.